so if you're playing in a jazz situation, this is definitely what you want to uh, try to remember. So if you're playing in 2-3 clave, the palito pattern it goes like this. We've done this, right? But when you add all the other things in a non-folkloric setting, you're taking out one of the notes. Because as drummers, we, we're not just playing a piece of wood now. We've got more things to hit. So they take out the other hand, and they just come up with this. So that rhythm is fundamental to what happens in Cuban popular dance music, and it happens in jazz music as well. I'll play it really slow. It's uh, one, two, three, and, and one, two, and, and, and one, two, three, and, and one, two, and, and, and one. So again, the real more syncopated uh, side of that rhythm is on the three side of the clave. Right? So one, two, that's just the straight two quarter notes. One, two, three, and, and one, two, and, and, and one. So I know that's like a whole lot to remember. Nobody's going to walk out of here and be remembering everything that I'm saying. But I, I can tell you that there's a really great book. If you really are turned on by what I'm showing you and you want to learn everything I'm telling you right now is in a book called Afro-Cuban Rhythms for the Drum Set by Frankie Malave. Um, I can't remember the publishing company. Uh, Drummers, Drummers, Manhattan, no? Drummers Collective. That's no, right. Collective. Yeah, yeah. It's a great book. I'm sure nowadays it comes with a CD. Um, when I bought it, it was a cassette. That anybody remembers those. Um, but it basically runs through everything that I'm telling you. It's all written down. So I highly recommend you, you know, you, you pick up that book if you really like what I'm showing you. So all right, so the way that, that all fits together on the drum set is uh, depending on you've got these three different sounds, or really four different sound sources here, to put that uh, on the drum set. And it it really just depends on the, the, the musical situation. So, and it's gonna depend on the dynamics. So if I'm playing with another percussionist and I wanna play just a basic groove, I can keep clave with my cross stick and I can play the cross kind of pattern here. And I can add the bass drum again on the end of two on the three side. So that is the most basic, I mean, you can't play any more simply than that and play Cuban music, you know. <laughs> so you get to play a lot of notes when you're playing Afro-Cuban rhythms. Mm -hmm. That's part of the appeal to it. Um, so you can expand upon that by the, uh, the accent pattern. So I'm not just playing a real generic monotonal rhythm here. There's an accent pattern that falls in line with the rhythm. Um, it's the, the one, 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 one. So we are accenting the one here, both, both measures. So I'm going to try to see if I can do this. I'm going to take out the other notes that I'm not playing that are unaccented. See if I can get that to happen. Uh. the pattern within the pattern, right? So if you're always really conscious of where that pattern is, is, is at within the framework of the rhythms, then you're, you can really kind of get away from playing just the standard. So if, for example, if I'm gonna play uh, in a Latin jazz context, 
I'm not necessarily going to just play that over and over again because this is boring. It's just like if you're on a jazz gig and you just play this over and over again. You know, you can swing and it's great, but you know, it's really not. And I don't know anybody that's going to play a jazz gig and not, you know, variate, variate the the symbol. So the same thing goes for playing jazz. If you really a lot of times I'll see guys that, that, that can play Latin, you know, the real generic Latin rhythm really well, but that's all they'll do. You know, when they're playing a, a, a Latin thing, and they just play that one little rhythm. It doesn't have any life to it other than it's just this repeat rhythm that they're kind of regurgitating um, over and over again. So you really have to get inside the rhythm, the, the, the pattern that's within the pattern, and feel that so that you can kind of play around it just like you would if you're playing jazz, or if you're playing, if you're playing a rock gig, right? So if you have a rock stand, you're not necessarily going to just play that over and over again for the song. You know, you're going to do some little things that aren't necessarily fills, but things that are going to propel the song a bit. Same thing goes with these rhythms. Just because they're very syncopated and busy doesn't mean that we have to just lock into them over and over again. So let's play a little bit um, together. And I'm going to start off just repeating the pattern, but then I'm going to try to get outside of that, still maintaining the rhythm, still staying true to the clave, but I'm going to try to kind of free up a little bit. So I'll start with just the bass drum on the end of two, and then you'll, you know, kind of uh, uh, what I would consider like a jazz approach to the rhythm. So you can see how it can develop quite nicely on the, on the kit. Cool, right? Uh, I'll see you around two. situation, whether it's a pop thing, whether it's uh, a dance thing, whether it's a jazz thing, and then the volumes as well. So I demonstrated how you can play it here. If you want a more traditional timbali sound, you can play it here. Uh, you can play it on the ride cymbal for a more jazzy thing. Uh, one thing I was doing, I was taking the accent pattern, the pattern that's within the pattern, and playing it up here. And that really drives, you know, when you start putting that bell in there, it really drives things. Uh, another thing to do is to put it, if you really, more of a dance situation, but if, you, uh, if you're really building, you can play it on the bell. So there's a second pattern, though, that developed, um, and that's what's considered uh, more of uh, what you call the mambo pattern, I guess you could call it, yeah. Um, so as the music was developing, you already had the bongo bell, which is really knocking out that half note feel. One, you know, the one, two, three, four, one. So they came up with another pattern, or another pattern developed, that um, becomes real common to play during uh, a chorus of a song. Or if you're in a jazz situation, maybe when, you know, the, in the shout chorus, when the horns are really blaring. Uh, and it's a, it's a clave conscious thing as well. It's a pattern that uh, 
has a, a syncopated side and a clear and, and a less syncopated side. And then it goes like this. It's one, two, three, and one. slink along quite as well. Um, but again, um, this is a rhythm that really as you started to hear a lot in the 50s with uh, Tito Puente uh, and the Machito Orchestra. Um, they, they, they really, uh, the music has come to New York, some of the percussionists have come to New York at this point, and the music has taken on a, a life of itself as it kind of diverges with jazz. So that's really when the roots of Latin jazz developed. Prior to that in Cuba, there was really just these, you know, traditional forms of music that had developed. Once it came to New York, it's really when it started to take off when it was with jazz. So if I'm playing in a, uh, in a dance situation, for a verse of a song or for an introduction of a song, I may play this rhythm. pattern a little more tightly than you would in a jazz situation. I'll still use that rhythm, but you can really um, variate it quite, quite a bit. So if I'm not tied down to just the dance groove, I could do something, um, something like this. <laughs> as well, he's not knocking out the exact rhythm the whole time. He's swinging, you know, because he has a, a jazz perspective. He's really playing uh, the pattern, but it's not necessarily uh, the exact pattern. And this is actually very similar to the way a jazz player has his own signature. So if you're listening to a really great jazz drummer playing this pattern, the way the guy plays that pattern is different. If everybody here sat down and played that pattern, it would have its own feel. Everybody has its own signature feel for that. 